pratica di Lecce is an Italian town of about 2,450 inhabitants in the province of Lecce. It is located in the central eastern Salento, 12 km from Lecce, 16 km from the Adriatic Sea and 32 km from the Ionic coast. Ancient and archaic land with a prosperous agriculture, breeding and milk production. Land full of goats, as indicated in the toponym of the name Capra Ricca, that is Goat Ridge. The welcoming historical center of Capra Ricca di Lecce, with its narrow streets, is rich with magnificent, intimate and comfortable carchard houses, which date back to the 18th century. The courtyard houses are often provided with a big semi-closed courtyard, on which overlooks the main residence or more than house, which share the courtyard as a common place of socialization between the various members of the extended family. In some courtyard houses there is the vegetable garden, another attractive element. It was of fundamental importance for the cultivation of what was necessary for the maintenance of the family. The palace dates back to the Norman period, around the 12th century, when Tancredi d'Alta Villa encouraged the development of construction for defensive and religious purposes. This is an ancient military fortress because of the presence of solid fortified walls, which protected the entire architectural complex. Today just one of the two towers still exists and is in a good state of conservation, once they controlled and protected the castle from external attacks. This tower, located in the garden of the castle, was built before the castle itself. It was then restored and reinforced in the 15th century by the Barons Guarini after the Turkish invasion of 1480 to better respond to Levantine incursions. Their presence is testified by a coat of arms placed at the center of the big tower. The entrance portal of the castle has a smooth ashlar of excellent workmanship and above the castle's front door there is a magnificent balcony elegantly decorated in the Rococo style, a tangible sign of the refinement of the structure. The garden is characterized by an entrance where seven columns on each side act as guardians of the corridor which leads toward the manor. In its A day, the palace has equipped with 99 rooms among which stood out the well-known Hall of Mirrors, furnished with 17th-18th century furniture. Unfortunately, all traces of this cultural heritage have been lost. The baronial palace still preserves the testimonies of a big underground olive mill with an area of 400 square meters. As for many other underground olive mills in Salento, it was also constructed between the 15th and 19th century. The underground olive mill is accessible from the ancient stairway. Now worn out by time, it gives access to the central zone which originally included a basin, the millstones and an area reserved for pressing the olives. With the Calabrian type presses, the wells for collecting the oil and the oil deposit and the so-called pile for storing the oil. Now all that remains is the circular trays upon the ground of the basin and some ancient millstones. There are also some other areas dug in the rock which overlook the pressing basin zone. Among these environments you can see the stables with the various mangers for the rest animals.
Caprarica still preserves the testimony of the medieval period with the well-preserved ancient stables. They were used as a place for the accommodation, the care, the feeding and the rest of the animals. Here sheep and goats were reared for milk, cheese and wool, from which fabrics were produced for the packaging of clothes. In those places, women used to work during the winter periods, because these environments were warmed by the animals' breath. Testimony of the Caprarica's rural heritage and colonial period are the magnificent ancient farmhouses, some of which perfectly restored and shining of a new light. Once the farmhouse was a conglomerate of buildings and houses fitted out as agricultural enterprises and for the recovery of workers who lived there for long periods of the year. The most representative complex is the farmhouse Stali, which is an educational farmhouse because it offers qualified educational paths, cooking courses for interested and operators in this sector, and interesting tourist packages about harvesting and pressing of olives. Another well-known farmhouse in the neighborhoods is Kurti, to the location of a private agricultural enterprise where it is still possible to admire the sheep farming and the sale of zero kilometers products. Like the wall Salento, also Caprarica has some century-old olive trees, timeless majestic presences, guardians of the territory and witnesses of a centuries-old peasant history. These trees are the most precious thing that Salento preserved unchanged over the years, not only because they have always represented an important source of income and supply of the excellent extra virgin olive oil, but also because they are the characteristic symbol of the Salento. Wrinkly and patient peasant ants have turned over the soil and prepared it for the cultivation of olives. Since then, this tree has become the best friend of the peasant, a child to take care and protect, in a symbiotic relationship between man and nature, which continues over time. The breathtaking beauty of the unusual and mystical shapes of the trunks, twisted together with strange forms and big sizes, makes these ancient trees look like real living sculptures. Each tree is a mix of divine magic and natural harmony, each of them different, unique and unrepeatable.
the territory of Caprarica is spectacular and suggestive, even more if you admire it from the top of the serra. It is a slope, a slight undulation of the ground, considered an extension of the Murge Plateau and placed at about 110 meters above sea level. It raises from Caprarica to Galugnano and then it drops to smoothly caress the neighboring towns. The Serre, commonly known in this way, are a place to relax and practice sport. Today it has become a favorite place for various cultural initiatives and activities. An equipped picnic area with benches, children's games and fitness equipment makes it an ideal place to spend a day surrounded by greenery and the pure wild nature. Located in the Serra of Caprarica, the Archeodrome Calos is considered the largest outdoor museum in Italy. Inside the museum, six different temporal sections have been recreated. They trace man's life from the prehistory up to the present day. In the protohistoric section, you can admire the reconstruction of some dolmen, menhir and speck, megalithic testimonies of global interest. In the section of the Bronze Age, you can instead admire the reproduction of the impressive and interesting arts. They have a novel plan, realized with a plinth of stone and supported by a system of wooden stakes covered with reeds and branches. There are also bigger houses belonging to the chieftain. In the Messapian section, particularly suggestive, is the sacred area, characterized by the so-called chippi, blocks of local stone in a parallelepiped or truncated pyramid form, planted in the ground. You can also admire the votive column with a magnificent landscape of the serra, which represents the reconstruction of a probable place of worship dedicated to the goddess Tana, the Messapian goddess of the weather phenomena. Another section represents the ancient Rome's word, given that the Serra of Caprarica was also very frequented by the Romans, and it was also known as Lisieri di Tiberio, Ottavio e Costantino. Here you can admire the reproduction of roots, statues and temples of the ancient Rome. Another section of the Archidrome is dedicated to the medieval village, with the reproduction of the workshops, such as that of the coopers, the traditional manufacturers of barrels used for wine storage and transport. Among the various workshops, there is that relating to the iron working and other practices of the time. The final step is the section dedicated to the peasant culture, a real demo ethno-anthropological museum focused on the valorization of the peasant objects and traditions. In this section, a kitchen, the heart of the peasant family, was reconstructed. Around the fireplace, the whole family met and talked about the events of the day, especially during the winter period, 